Uh, before I ask, thank you. Before I ask the next question, could you each just take one minute just to tell people if after this panel, they wanna follow up with you, what's the best way to follow up with you? Where's your website? How do they find you? How do they call you? How do they learn about your programs? What's the best way for someone to follow up with you? Great, okay, I'll start out with that one. Probably the best way to track me is probably on Instagram, David Avocado Wolf. That's my most kind of mainstream stuff. And I have a lot of fun with Instagram. It's, uh, it's really become, actually I have a lot more fun than Facebook. I, I don't really like Facebook that much anymore, even though they're both owned by the same people. It's just a better fit. Also, davidwolf.com, D-A-V-I-D-W-O-L-F-E.com. And one more thing I'll say is thebestdayever.com forward slash links l-a-n-k-s and that's where i kind of put my most updated stuff although i do need to update it. it's about two weeks since i updated it last time but that's where i keep like whatever's happening right now is where I, i'll put it all there on my links site or with some people call those uh what do they call it they call it a link tree a link tree site okay for me um it's drcousins.com that's really easy and treeoflife.mnmightynetworks.co. And that's like our community because we, we're building a, we have built an international community of people who are like-minded and needing and appreciating that communal support. So those are the two places, drcousins.com, treeoflife.mn.co. Then my books are out there all over the place. My newest book, Into the Nothing. It's more, it's a spiritual autobiography. It's another way of uh, kind of tuning in. We've just moved to Israel. We're just setting up. And so we're not as organized. And then um, I'm doing regular uh, teachings and transmission over the internet uh, on a weekly basis in a variety of ways. So those are the uh, easy ways to uh, find them. Okay, for me, uh, you can go to sanjevani.net. That's S-A-N-J-E-V-A-N-I.net. Um, that you'll learn information about our clinic and what we have to offer. I offer consultations all around doing Zoom. We've been doing this pre-COVID, so I'm used to that. We have people from all around the world. I had a, a family from South Africa uh, yesterday. Day before yesterday, I had someone from Dubai, and obviously locally here in New Mexico and Georgia and New York and LA and Chicago and stuff like that. But it allows us that we know we can, you know, we can we can send kits out, we can do testing out, we can send product out. You know, we can do we do all the teaching. Um, uh, people can come here. We have a wonderful uh, kind of all, all, all service center here. We offer Ayurvedic medicine uh, fully with my, my partner, Maureen Sutton. She's an Ayurvedic doctor. So we do all the panchakarma here. We, I do neural acupuncture. So it's for specifically for neurological issues like MS, Parkinson's, and stroke. In, the, in fact, there's a movie called Return to Life that's just been released this past weekend. It's a documentary film on that. So you, you can, you'll, we'll probably be posting that as well. Uh, I'm not really big into social media yet. So I'm going to learn from David, by the way, how to, how to be more, more public and all that stuff. Um, on our website, though, you'll see that there's a media channel. You'll have all the interviews and other, other lectures I've done. And we'll slowly start updating that as well. Um, we also have a newsletter. So sign up at our website website because we do release information on health information. I always give updates on evidence-based practices. So if something comes up in the literature, something that we're offering, like here's the data. So if you go to our site, if you go to our sanjevnistore.com, you'll see that under every product, if there's data or research, we usually it will have the PDF that you can download uh, and look at the latest research. So like same thing on Bosmark, here's all the research now on even uh, lowering inflammatory responses, even during the COVID times and stuff like that. And also safety, safety studies or efficacy studies, comparison studies as well. Um, so that's where you can, you also can go to aninflammationnation.com and get my book or it's on Audible. And this year, I'm proud to, uh, to announce that we're going to be looking at a program of maybe turning the book into a docu-series or documentary, because it's something that we can explore all these aspects and avenues of what kind of everybody in this conference is talking about, all these different aspects of how to work with health. And if I can convert that into something that people can watch and just kind of enjoy, uh, that's a good way to get more people healthier. So send um, Dr. Cousins and Dr. One more thing. I didn't mention info at treeoflife.nu. Info at treeoflife.nu. Simple. You could, you could also go to our website, The Real Truth About Health, and we have a link for each of the speakers. So if you didn't get any of this, you can go through there. Um, I know Dr. Cousins and Dr. Pye 
You offer individual phone consultations if someone wants to set that up. David, do you do individual phone consultations? I do if somebody corners me. <laughs> so sometimes I'll do it. If, if you catch me at the right time and I have enough time, yes, I'll do it. Okay. Okay. So next question um, that comes up all the time and everyone's always trying to get an answer. What exactly, based on everything going on in the world in 2021, are you recommending that we do for water? What is the number one best solution for today for everyone who's watching this? What do you recommend? Drink it. That's a, the key. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great way to start. You got to drink water. And you can see that, that one of the things I noticed from water fasting, and, and I think um, Cousins, Dr. Cousins and, uh, and Dr. Pye will agree, is how little water I'm normally drinking. I'm never drinking enough water. I mean, when you're on a water fast, I might drink three or four of these. I mean, not this brand, but about a liter of uh, in amount. And I'm like, other days, I'm like, I'm not drinking that much. And that just tells me about habits of hum humanity where we don't drink enough water. So what I recommend is when you come home and you're like hungry, drink, drink water. I just came in here after, you know, just eating three mangoes. That was my, my trip food. And what I want to do, I want to drink water. I really recommend that as an instinct, a reflexive instinct. What type of water? I'm a spring water hunter. I've hunted spring water on five different continents and probably 350 to 400 different springs in the most outrageous circumstances and situations you could ever imagine. I really love it. I really recommend it. If you've got that in your heart and soul to to go out and find where the water comes out of the ground naturally it's really something special and there's always something unique about each one but in the long-term picture of the research on water i'm really especially when i'm fasting doing a lot of deuterium depleted water otherwise known as ddw water crazy research on that it started actually in the 1930s with the um an american researcher who was who basically had overturned the scientific principle that all hydrogen was the same that hydrogen, deuterium, which is a heavier hydrogen, it has a neutron in it if we want to get specific, but we could just think about it as heavy hydrogen, and tritium, which is even heavier hydrogen, are all the same. Actually, this guy, he, he's like, nope, let me check it out. He started sprouting deuterium oxide, basically H2O, but instead of it being an H, it's a heavy hydrogen, and, and he started using, actually, strangely, tobacco seeds. And he found out that tobacco seeds will not sprout, no seeds will sprout, and that deuterium and tritium are totally toxic to life. That led to a series of research discoveries that ended the whole project really up in Russia. And the Russians were trying to figure out like, oh my God, if you have too much deuterium in your body, it's trouble. And that's really true. And the numbers are around 156 parts per million, if you have that much water in your body, of, de of the deuterium water, not hydrogen. You want the hydrogen water less, less deuterium, just to be clear about that. You want depleted deuterium. You don't want the deuterium out. At any rate, what, it, what ended up happening is the Russians figured out you had to water fast and you had to water fast and dry fast and water fast and dry fast for like 20 days. I mean, this is really intense stuff. It's very difficult for anybody to do that. But then came the Hungarians and they found out through cancer research that if that you could take a water like this, like a spring water like this or any water and fractionally distill it or fractionally freeze it. The deuterium water is the heavy water. So it's the last to come off in distillation. So you could just distill 90% off, get rid of that 10%. Distill the other 90% off, get rid of that 10% and keep doing that like four or five times. Suddenly, instead of having, say, 140 or 145 parts per million deuterium, which would be common for something like this, you suddenly have 85 parts per million. If Now, they did research on people who drank that with various different cancer diagnoses and 20 years of studies. And it's, it's, to me, it's conclusive. The more deuterium you have in your body, the more troubles. Now, why is that important out of all things? I mean, who cares? Like deuterium, what's that mean? Well, you have more deuterium in your body than you have calcium, magnesium, and almost anything else because you're mostly hydrogen according to our mineral theory. And therefore, you want that hydrogen to be the best hydrogen there is. And that means that you don't want deuterium and you don't want tritium. And so this is something to explore and look into. It's called DDW water, deuterium depleted water. So David, for those people that are not willing to go spring water hunting and who are not looking to take advantage of this new information, which is really interesting and definitely some of us want to explore it. But for those people that are not and are saying, give me more options that I can use um, 
here, wherever I live, um, among the internet and the stores I shop at, what's the next best after that? Well, if you had to, I would recommend getting a full, if you don't have a filter in your house for all purposes, for cleaning up your dishes, for doing your laundry, for bathing in, you're going to become the filter, right? Either you get the filter, so it's filtered outside of you, or you become a filter because human body and actually all mammals, we're all just a series of filters. We could say that about all animal life, even plant life. So we don't want those, we don't want our body to act as a filtration for all the chlorine and all the heavy metals and God knows what else is in normal water supply. So get a water filtration system on your house and and preferably something that works really easily, like a self-flushing system. And then the next step is even that I'm not really happy about drinking, but I would be willing to take that water if it's been properly filtered, then run it through charcoal filters. I use a Berkey, look that one up. I I think it's B-E-R- K-E-Y, I'm pretty sure it could be B-I-R. But anyway, Berkey filters, just two big carbon filters that sit in a container or ceramic filters, and then let the water drain through that. Then take that and charge it up under the moonlight, put a little bit of sea salt in there, a little bit of electrolytes, and re-invive it, revive it. That might be something you could do. And then what I love about all of that and everything that we're talking about, and what, what I love about this question is water responds to our intention. We know that that's a fact now from the research. So therefore all this stuff that you do to make the water better, the water knows it reacts to it. So you're putting, so the whole process of it all is actually really cool. Cause the water's going, Oh, this person really wants healthy water and the water will change and metamorphosize itself and become something different because of your intention. And one step further, if someone says, okay, that's really good, but just tell me, should I go to this? Can I get distilled water in glass bottles? Can I get spring water? Is there any commercial thing for the regular person who is just trying drinking tap water now that you would say is still good? Like is distilled water in glass bottles anything? Is that good? Is that a, a, a step, a temporary step? Is well, DDW water is like quadruple or quintuple distilled, actually. In, and you can get that in glass. And sometimes I get that product. There's one out there called Divinia that I get in glass, and it's a good product. If I'm going to do this kind of a thing, like actually a bottle, I'm always going to go with glass. The problems of phthalates and BPA are really profound. I mean, right now I'm about to do a dive on phthalates and how really harmful they really are, how toxic the whole really thing is. So I am just such a fan of just going back to the glass bottles. That's really where we need to go. And if you need to get a spring water from the health food store, Mountain Valley spring water, I like a lot. It's a little bit of a heavier one. It's got more minerals in it. If you like something lighter, I was doing, I think it's called Sharkies. That's one comes from a deep fissure in the earth. It comes in, a, it's not a green, it's clear. That's another good one. There's many good ones out there. I like, uh, what else is another one I like? I, it, you can't get them in the U.S. very easily, but Volvic is a great spring water if you can get it in glass. And it's got some great research behind it. And I could say that about many of them. There's so many good ones out there. I like uh, Castle Rock from uh, Mount Shasta. And a good friend of mine started that company. He's no longer there, but he's, he started it. So just, it's a big deal. What water you're putting in your body makes a big difference. And make sure you select quality and put your intention in it. So what I'll recommend just real quick, just make it simple uh, from from some people like because I like I agree with what he's saying. And, uh, you know, and all of us are drinking from glass, which is great. Um, I always tell people go to environmental working group, EWG.org, and then type in the water database, put your zip code in and they'll, they'll test. They've already done your city or your municipal out at municipality testing. And so I'll just example this week, you know, with with all the patients I've seen, you know, we've had high uranium and, you know, we're from New Mexico. We have testing here. So we have high uranium. We have, you know, people get lead and mercury and arsenic and, and you know, or, or people who've had PET scans that have gadolinium, you know, so that's still in their body. So there's a variety of things. But first, I always look at, you know, what is what are you getting exposed to? Because then you can decide how much because, you know, money's an issue for everybody. Right. So, yeah. Do I have a whole house water filter? Absolutely. Do I still reverse osmosis that after it's coming out? Yes. Do I then add trace minerals that because we just stripped out all the minerals? Yes. Do I then structure the water? Absolutely. There's a level to that, but the minimum basic I would tell everybody is just get a, a simple reverse osmosis because when we look at ch- like just charcoal filters and you look at it in the environmental working group, it's not going to pick out, it's not going to take out every single heavy metal or particularly like more of the um, contaminant uh, yeah, like uraniums and nitrates and radiums. It just won't do that. Um, so they'll tell you that. Now, if you don't have that in your water, then a charcoal filter is fine. 
You know, even a cheap, simple one in your refrigerator will be fine. We always want to still. Re- so I don't want always people to feel like they have to do everything because that's a little bit like I can't afford it. So then I don't do anything. Right. Our goal is always to just reduce your risk. And so the first thing is looking at your water report, uh, EWG, and it's all independently tested. Then look at, you know, what your budget is. And like in our, I had to do a whole house water filter because we had high iron and manganese coming in our water in our area of our town. We actually get red stains in our water. So that's really toxic. You know, it's not good to be drinking high amounts of iron and manganese. So I had to get a special filter for that. But the average person, you know, when you do a reverse osmosis, which is usually about two to $300, depending on the size and how many people, and how many gallons of the family, it comes out to two cents per gallon. So you can't get cheaper than that. And, and the, when, when I look at bottled water, although I do like drinking glass and I do like mountain spring water, you know, I do get things from our office we get in glass. But, you know, for the average person, you know, you know when, even when they go to the, 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 the health store and they're filling up these gallons, you know, it's 25 cents to 45 cents a gallon. That's more expensive. You know, we're buying bottled water that's more expensive than gas right now. People are buying like pre-bottled water than plastic, paying a high amount of water that does have phthalates, that have BPA, does have all sorts of things. Even when they reuse the plastic, you're getting more and more more leaching from that water. So the idea is I like to look at if you can reverse osmosis, add some minerals back, that would be the chip, cheapest, simplest solution. However, you know, obviously getting a mountain spring water, fantastic. You know, those are like, now we're like, you know, upping the ante, up in the ante, structuring the water, up in the ante. But for the average person at home who's like, you know, I live in an apartment or I'm living on a minimal budget, do, do the water, you know, check your water there and put a, put a minimal or reverse osmosis. Then later on, it's like, well, if I'm living in a home, I can afford it. Let me put something so that I'm bathing in this water. I want to make sure everything is clean. As, as you said, I'll save your pipes. I'll save your dishes. I'll save less on, on, on detergents and soaps. So it's ways like you're trying to protect the pipes of your home as well as your body's skin is the largest organ. So I'm a really a, a fan, but I always have to look at the economic the economy of the patient because some people are like, oh yeah, I'm buying a new house. Well, then it's definitely worth the investment because you're going to be there for a long time. Or oh, I'm only here temporarily. Like, well, then maybe get a smaller unit. Like David has something, probably a sink, you know, you can, you can kind of probably move it, put it on a sink top, whatever. So there's anything that you can filter is better than no filter. But then at the end of the day, we all, I kind of look at the data and say, what do we really need to take out for sure? Because where you live in my book, there's a section that's letting you know that talks about water. And each city, based on the amount of drugs that we use and that we eat and we, we metabolize and we urinate, goes back and the municipal comes in. So like Seattle has the highest amount of antidepressants in the water. New York has the highest amount of Xanax in the water. Las Vegas has the highest amount of uh, hormones in the water. So if you live in Houston, right, the, the megapolis of cancer, right, where there's, you know, MD Anderson, Texas A&M and Baylor, 100,000 employees of just treating cancer patients. That's a lot of chemotherapy going into patients, going back into the water system, coming in the tap. So we have to be using some kind of filtration system because these things are not being filtered from municipal. So, so yes, we're, we're, we're talking about like chlorides and fluorides and, you know, but now we're looking at like Prozac and, you know, methotrexate that's coming in the water as well. So definitely where you live will depend on where your water is. If you can get a mountain spring supply, in glass, that's that that would be the, the perfect. But anything that you can do is always a risk reduction. So I don't want to put people like like you have to do this, otherwise it's not. You want to do st- what you can afford and what you can do small steps and try to get over time a little bit better, better, better. Okay, so my approach is trying to make it simple. I don't trust any water, even if it's a great mountain spring. I don't know about the pipes unless you're collecting at the spring. So I use distilled water. I can trust it. It's clean and clear. I don't buy it at the place where there's plastic. I have my own water distiller. Then I activate it. Then I put a smidgen of uh, scalar salt in it. And that smidgen takes it back to kind of a normal level of minerals because there's 82 minerals in that. Then I stir it and create a vortex to pull energy into it. Then now it's uh, then it's activated because you've organized it again. The still water is disorganized, very poor energy water. You have to activate it. Then, as David, but really both of you pointed out, I bless it. Mm-hmm. So I'm putting my uh, energy in it to uh, maintain it. So that's how I approach it. It's simple uh, and. And I don't have to think about it. That's all I drink is the distilled water and that I've been upgraded and energized. 